Hey YouTubers. A little while ago in one of my vlogs I mentioned that I had uh, some boxes from Japan and I wasn't ready to open them because I was working on my office and I didn't want to get kind of sidetracked onto that. It was kind of like my reward to uh, be able to open these boxes and play with what's inside. So I finally did that. I got close enough on the office. It's almost like I just needed to get the boxes open so I could get them out of the way. I went ahead and opened the box. And what you see here is not what was in the box. This is a little foreshadowing on something that goes here. What I did was I decided to dive into large format. In this case, 4x5 large format. And uh, this is a 4x5 field camera. This particular camera is a Horseman 4.5 FA. So uh, as you can see, it's nice and compact. It's you can't see this, but you might be able to hear it is all metal construction, at least the body of it. It's aluminum. It weighs about four pounds, and as I mentioned, it's a four by five camera. So um, I'm still studying up on this thing. I don't know everything there is to know, but I thought I'd throw it on the tripod and show you a few things that I've learned thus far. And you'll probably get to see me struggle a little bit as I try to remember what controls what. So let me throw it on here. Let me lock the tripod head before I throw it on here. That would be a bad scene. Okay, so um, I'm glad I bought this giant Gitzo 3 series a while ago because it's perfect for this camera. So uh, first off, it's a field camera, which generally means uh, it's light and generally means it's going to be of a folding design. And in this case, this camera is definitely a folder. You can tell by its size. It's the size of a small lunchbox. Um, so to get going, though, you got to open it up and mount a lens. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Pretty much pull down the front. Then you reach inside and you pull out the front standard, which is where you mount your lens. Now, I've got a lens that, um, from everything I've read, uh, I hear it will fit inside the camera folded, uh, but I don't have a lens board for it yet. I've got another lens down here. Once I have that lens on the lens board, I should be able to put it in here and close the uh, lens inside of the camera and have basically a self-contained system, which would be pretty cool. So, as I said, this is the front standard. Then you have the focusing control right here. Uh, I guess I'll put a lens on it real quick just to give you a better sense of what this is all about. If you're a... Uh, Old school large format guy, this will be review for you. So I'm putting the uh, lens board into this little holder, which you have to hold your mouth just right to do. Got my mouth right that time. So now the lens is mounted. And uh, this is 150 F56 uh, Fujinon, by the way. So uh, this is how you would uh, set it up to take a picture. I've played with it a little bit in the backyard. Um, having to get used to seeing images upside down and backwards. One cool thing this camera has when you're um, when you're composing your shot and focusing, it's got this little kind of built-in focusing hood. And what I discovered while I was playing around in the backyard is this is okay, but it's kind of tough to see what's going on. So I ended up throwing a black t-shirt over my head. When I did that, I basically took this thing. This is so cool. This snaps open. You could just move it out of the way and use the ground glass this way, but it pops out of there so easily. I love this kind of stuff. I love nicely machined, um, smooth uh, operating type of gear, and this camera is very much that. So I just popped the uh, focusing hood off and then threw a t-shirt over my head, and uh, I guess I'm just gonna carry a t-shirt with me. I've kind of researched uh, dark cloths or focusing cloths, and they seem to be more expense and trouble than they're worth most people that I read about tend to use a black t-shirt. So I'm going to try that first. Anyway, when you look in here, you see the image upside down and backwards. And uh, that's kind of challenging. The cool thing is, and I know this even from being a, uh, an artist, like a uh, traditional artist, watercolor and, and drawing and so forth, a lot of times you get a better feel for your composition when you see it upside down, backwards, whatever. So that might be an advantage of getting used to this. Let me put the back back on. Okay, that's in place. So with a field camera, um, it does have movements like any view camera. The movements, just because of the design of the camera, tend to be a little bit more limited. 
So I'll show off a few of them if I can remember how to do them. Let's see, I think if I loosen this lock over here, then I can use this knob and have a geared rise. Use this for perspective control. Uh, you can actually move the point of view of the photograph up, like you're looking up, or, you know, like you're pointing your camera up without actually pointing your camera up. The other thing is you can drop, so to go the other direction, you can drop the bed, but then you would have to compensate with tilt to keep things even, unless you're trying to do something where you don't need to keep things even. This also gets the uh, front standard out of the way in case you put a really wide angle lens on. In that case, you would raise the front standard to keep the back and the lens even, or again, whatever sort of uh, uh, effect or correction you're going for. So to put that back, just slide it up like this. Um, let me get zero this back out. Uh, it also has shift, so you can move the front standard back and forth. This has center to, to tense, which is nice, so it kind of snaps back to the center. And it has a front swing. There's so many little locks and catches and so forth, it's kind of hard to remember all of it. You hold down a control over here, and then you can do swing in the front. Hopefully you can see that. I'm a novice here, so hang with me while I do all this stuff. Um, one more thing is it does have back movements, but they're kind of cheesy. Um, it's not on a standard like this where you can lock things down and use geared movements and kind of have things under control. It's a little different than that. You basically unlock these four locks and then the back kind of separates. It's always a little scary. There we go. So the back kind of separates and then you can get your uh, tilt and then you can do swings. And you could also do this if you just pull it straight out. You do this to get a little more extension if you're running a longer lens. On a view camera like this, when you change focal lengths, you actually have to change the length of the bellows in order to focus properly. So this camera, uh, one of the downsides of it, it has a fairly limited extension on the bellows. So it doesn't run really long lenses and this uh, extending back is one way to give yourself a little bit more room to uh, shoot a longer lens. And then once you get it in position, you would lock it down, take your shot. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I've played around with uh, tripping the shutter and that sort of thing. So uh, if you haven't seen it before, you cock the shutter there. I don't have a cable release on it, but uh, that's how you trip the shutter. Um, that's about all I'm going to talk about on this thing. But what I'm finding is I'm having to study so many different things. Uh, taking on sheet film. I mean, that's a whole different process. There are uh, holders that you slide into the back here to take the shot and just learning how first off the film is boxed and it's kind of triple boxed and it's got an envelope in it. And these are things I've heard. I haven't even tried it yet. Uh, and you've got to be able to do that in the dark. So I bought some throwaway film to just do that in the light and practice with. And you got to get that loaded into holders and you got to do that properly. And you, when you're taking your shot, you got to slide the holder in. You got to remember to pull the dark slide out. You got to remember to close the lens before you slide the dark slide out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's going to take me a while to get rolling with this thing because I'm basically studying and studying. The other thing is, when it comes to development time, you need a different developing system. I've bought what's called a Mod 54 insert for a Patterson tank, and it came with a Patterson tank as well. Um, so that's a different process of loading. You kind of talk over the film and, and slide it into these holders. I'll eventually show it. Uh, again, it's a slight change. I have to use a lot of chemical. I have to use a liter of chemical. So I've got to figure out how to do that because none of my bottles are a liter. They're all a quart. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, I'm really excited to shoot this thing, uh, but I'm also intimidated. So uh, that's okay, though. I really love learning. That's one of the main reasons I do the hobbies I do, is they give me an opportunity to learn how things work, learn different things. Um, when I'm in learning mode, my brain is just like a sponge, and I get completely entranced by 
figuring out how things work and, and thinking about how I'm going to make use of them and, and that sort of thing. So that's why the 4x5 and uh, that's it for this video. So I'll catch you later.